Have you ever wanted to take calculus or have you been curious about what this course is all about? Now, a lot of you out there have heard the word or are familiar with uh, calculus, and you probably know it's a very mysterious and complicated mathematics. So what we're looking at here is an example of a calculus problem. And uh, what I'm going to do in this video is highlight a big, big reason why calculus is so powerful. And I'm going to do this at a very basic level. So even if you don't understand much math, you'll be able to understand what this means by the end of this video. So in other words, we're going to be uh, doing your first basic calculus problem if you've never done calculus. All right, so let's go ahead and see why calculus is so powerful. All right, so the first thing uh, calculus deals with is area. All right, so here I have three basic figures. I got a mystery figure down here. I'll show you that in a second. But uh, if I wanted to find the area of this rectangle right here, how could I do that? Well, most of you might uh, say to yourself, well, yes, I can find the area of this. This is super easy. It's just the length times the width, right? Length times width is the area of a rectangle, and you would be correct. All right, how about a circle? No problem, we can find the area of a circle. So the area of a circle is pi r squared, where r is the radius, right? So most of you might uh, be saying to yourself, yes, this is easy, I'm with you, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Keep going with your explanation of calculus. All right, how about a triangle? Not a problem there, so that's areas uh, equal to one half base times height, right? So not a problem, uh, we are talking about area, and I showed you three basic figures, and, and uh, you know, most of you might, you know, um, already be saying to yourself, well, what's the point here, right? I know how to find the area of these figures because you give me the formula, right? All right, so now how about something like this, all right? Could we find the area of this figure? Now, this figure here kind of lo looks like a bit of a rectangle, but up here, there's a curve, all right? This is not a trapezoid. This is like, it kind of curves like so. So what is uh, the area of this figure? Now, some of you might be saying, not a problem. I can find the area of this figure. I just need the formula. Well, there is no formula. Unfortunately, I have no formula for you. So, you know, how do we find the area of uh, this particular figure? And I don't even know what this figure is called. It might be some sort of wedge. Well, guess what? If there's no... Um, uh, formula, well, we are in a real problem, okay? So you might be thinking to yourself, well, what do we do here? Well, this is where calculus comes to the rescue. One of the biggest uh, problems that calculus solves, it um, uh, is able to find the area of all kinds of crazy looking figures, um, those type of figures where we don't have a formula, okay? Now, if you kind of take a look at these figures here, a rectangle, you know, a circle, a triangle. These are kind of, you know, nice basic figures, right? But, you know, in real life, we deal with all kinds of crazy shapes. Things are like this or maybe something like this, right, that we'd want to know the area of. And we're like, wow, how do we find the area of that? Well, we're going to need to use calculus. So this is the number one. Well, there's two big problems that calculus uh, solved, one of which is area and area and volume. It kind of goes beyond area, but we're going to just stick with uh, area for the purpose of this video. All right, so now let's go ahead and see how this works. But uh, before we really get into the nuts and bolts of calculus, I would hope that you would be able to subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification button if you get any uh, value from this so you can get my latest uh, uh, videos. But let's go ahead and continue on with calculus. All right, so again, I'm, of course, I'm uh, you know, skipping over a lot of things, but here is our lovely little figure. We're trying to figure out the area of it. Uh, now, let's suppose you're like, well, I don't know if I can get the exact area of this, but you might be able to get some sort of uh, decent uh, estimation, right? So here, this is a rectangle. How about if I just kind of cut this little thing off right there and I find the area of this part? Okay, now the area of this thing is not the area of this entire figure, but it would be a rough estimate, right? Now, of course, this rectangle here, uh, I can find the area of this by just going length times the width, right? So I can find the area of this shape. And uh, you might be saying to yourself, well, all right, well, that's an okay estimate, but because I use kind of a big rectangle, 
how about we use two smaller rectangles like this, right? And of course, we know how to find the area of a rectangle. It's length times the width, and here's the width, and here's the length. So here, this is a little bit better, okay, estimation of this little figure. So I'm kind of noticing to myself, well, listen, if I use skinnier uh, little rectangles, um, I can get a better estimation of the area. And this is a real big concept about calculus, right? In terms of finding the area of uh, figures where we don't have formulas, is if we can kind of find and add up the area of smaller rectangles, our estimation of the area of this entire figure gets better, okay? So right here, this is uh, pretty good. It's certainly this area uh, estimation is much better than this, but how can we even make this better? Well, we could just kind of like find the area of all sorts of little tiny rectangles like so, and they would just kind of like almost be the perfect area right now. Of course, I'm writing these super skinny little rectangles, uh, these little strips, but if I can get these infinitely tiny, small little rectangles and just add them up, the area of all these little rectangles, I would get uh, nearly a perfect, uh, you know, exact answer um, in terms of the area of this figure, okay? So this is a big part of what calculus is about, uh, is what we call integration, right? We're basically going to effectively find the area of all these little infinitely little skinny rectangle strips underneath here. Now, of course, you know, to add up, uh, you know, all these infinite little uh, rectangle strips would take a long time. So we need to use uh, some other techniques in order to solve this. All right, but let's go back to our shape here. And how can we kind of define uh, this exact shape? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Okay, so for those of you that have some basic algebra behind you, that is fantastic. And if you're not familiar with algebra, uh, you can have what we call a little grid system here, an x-axis and a y-axis. But uh, here we have our curve, right? And right here, this is effectively, this little blue highlighted area is kind of uh, more or less uh, this shape right here. Okay, so this shape right in here, like so, is this uh, right here. Uh, okay, I have highlighted in blue. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to kind of specifically define the parameters of this shape, okay? And the way we're going to do that is by giving a rule to this curve, okay? So you can see here I have a shape that's bounded by this x-axis, and then it's kind of vertical, two vertical lines here, and then this top here is made up of a section of this curve. So we can kind of define this a little bit better uh, we can kind of specifically um, describe this shape that we're trying to find the area uh, of, okay? Now, we need to be able to do this first before we can apply some calculus. And if you stick with me for another couple minutes, I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to find the area of this figure right here. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this next step. So in algebra, okay, which is, of course, not um, calculus, I can uh, describe this curve right here, for example, with this formula, okay, y equals x squared, and this is just a rule or an equation of this curve, right? This happens to be called a parabola, so y equals x squared. You don't need to know uh, much about it, but just effectively, uh, we can just uh, describe with a formula this curve here as x squared, or specifically y equals x squared, or the function y equals x squared. So, you know, don't get, um, uh, you know, intimidated by this little technical stuff that I'm kind of talking about right now. But a curve or a shape on an xy plane, you can describe by an equation. So this particular equation here, this curve, I can uh, uh, describe as y, the equation y equals x squared. Now, I'm not interested in the entire curve. I'm just interested in this part here. And let's suppose along our x-axis right here in the middle is zero. This goes negative this way, like negative one, negative two, negative three. This would be one. And then right here, you can see our little shape is starting at two and it ends at three. Okay, so right in here is our specific little uh, shape that we're going to try to find the area of. Okay, so it's underneath this curve right here, y equals x squared. It's underneath it. 
but it only goes from 2 to 3 on the x-axis, okay? So it's, under, again, underneath this curve, and it goes from 2 to 3 on the x-axis. This defines this shape. Now, if you understand that, then we could pull uh, all this together to do some calculus, and now this is where the fun is going to kick in. All right, so here is our situation, and we want to find the area of this figure. How can we do that? Not a problem. We're going to use our superhero calculus, and here is some actual calculus notation, and this is what people would see, and they'd be like, oh my goodness, this is like so crazy difficult. There's no way I could understand it. You can easily understand us, okay? So this little uh, crazy figure right here is called elongated S. It's really what we call an integration symbol in calculus, but basically it's saying, hey, let's find the area, okay, let's find the area underneath this curve, X squared, okay, from there, uh, from two to three, from two to three. So that's all this is saying here. Okay, so this is calculus. And again, let me go ahead and just uh, describe this again. It's saying, hey, let's find the area underneath the curve x squared. Okay, so this is the curve x squared, but not the entire curve. We just want to go from 2 to 3. So this is what we call uh, the bounds. Okay, we're going to start from 2 and we're going to stop at 3. So this little dx here, that's a little calculus notation. We don't need to talk about that right now. But if we could figure this out, we're going to actually find the area uh, of this shape. Okay, and this little integration symbol here is also kind of, um, in some respects, uh, going to, it's kind of saying, hey, let's go ahead and add up all those little infinite strips underneath that uh, curve between 2 and 3. And when we do that, we'll get the area. Okay, now, of course, we're not going to calculate the individual areas of those strips. We're going to do something much easier. So in calculus, just like in uh, other mathematics like algebra, there are rules, okay? There's little procedures and things that we can follow. So this is not that difficult. So uh, again, this is called an integral, okay? What we're doing here is integration, and this is a huge part of calculus, all right, in terms of the problems calculus solves. So this is not that difficult, all right? So let's go ahead and actually do this problem. So we're gonna integrate x squared from two to three. All right, so here is the rule in calculus, and there's different rules, but this is, I'm going to uh, show you here that calculus doesn't have to be difficult. All right, so here we have our x squared, so the rule states the following, and of course I'm kind of, you know, oversimplifying, but no problem, this is really, you know, uh, um, you know, again, taught, or I'm teaching you at a level, you know, a basic level here, right? So x squared, what we're going to do is we're going to take this little exponent here and add 1. Okay, so 2 plus 1 is what? It's 3. So we're going to write the, uh, once we add 1, we're going to write x cubed. Okay, so we're going to take this 2, add 1, so we're going to write x cubed. All right, so that's what we're going to do. And then our answer, of whatever we got here, when we did 2 plus 1, of course, that's 3. We're going to divide that whole thing by 3. Okay, so let me go ahead and walk through that one more time, just so you understand this is not difficult. So we're going to take our x squared, we're going to add 1 to it. That's going to be x cubed, and then whatever this uh, number is, we're going to divide by it, okay? So we're going to have x cubed over 3. All right, so we're taking this integral, this calculus integral, and now with this little x cubed over 3, we can actually compute and calculate the precise area of this shape, okay, that runs between 2 and 3. Remember, that's what we're trying to do right here. We're going to find the area underneath this curve between two and three. So let's go ahead and calculate this right now. All right, so we're gonna take this x cubed over three, okay? And let me go down here. All right, so remember we just did this little integral thing. We're gonna take this x cubed minus three and we're gonna subtract it from itself, okay? But uh, we're just gonna write it this way. So this x right here, this represents a number and this represents a number. What we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in three, this top number right in here, and then we're going to plug in the bottom number over here, okay? Uh, we're going to replace these x's with these respective values. So again, right here, we're going to plug in a 3 for x, and right over here, we're going to plug in a 2 for x, right? So 2 comes from this 2, and 3 comes from uh, this 3 right here. This is our upper bound and our lower bound, 
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and plug in these X's uh, with these respective values and do the number crunching and then we will be done. All right, so here we go. So we're going to have 3 cubed over 3 minus 2 cubed over 3. 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, which of course is 27 over 3. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, or 8. So that's 8 over 3. So 27 minus, we have a fraction here, right? So same denominator. So 27 minus 8 is 19 over 3 when we subtract these fractions. Not difficult math, right? So 19 over 3 is the area. And if we find an estimation of 19 and we divide it by 3, uh, we'll get approximately 6.3. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that is, in fact, the area of this crazy little shape right here. Okay, we just actually computed the area. So the area of this shape right here, bound in underneath the curve x squared between 2 and 3, is approximately 6.3 units squared. All right, so we just actually did a calculus problem, an integration problem. And notice the uh, arithmetic I'm doing here. It's not that difficult, right? I mean, I'm working with some basic numbers. This is some fractions. Nothing too crazy. Hopefully, you have a sense of what's going on. Remember, calculus... Now, I'm not um, kind of dismissing that it, calculus is an advanced math. It is indeed a, a very advanced math, and there is a lot to learn. I and mean, I am skipping over a lot. But really, what I wanted to kind of um, do here is sh kind of demonstrate to you that, you know, calculus is a language, right? It's just like a, a language you're trying to you know, learn, maybe you're trying to learn Spanish, Chinese, you know, German, you know, if you don't know the language, of course, it's going to be difficult when you hear it or see it, right? But as soon as you know the words of the language or you start getting a feel for, you know, the different nouns, verbs, why not? you can kind of piece it together. Calculus is no different, right? It's just another uh, mathematical language, okay? And again, you know, when you see these symbols and whatnot, they're telling us to do something, all right? Because they'll never be overly intimidated by things you don't see in math. They're just things that, you know, uh, uh, you just have to learn, all right? Obviously, right? So, you know, don't be like, oh my God, calculus looks, it's so advanced because I don't understand what these symbols are, you know? No, of course not, right? Just like any language, if you don't know what it means, you know, uh, you're, it's going to be mysterious. But I'm telling you right now, if you have some sort of interest in calculus, you absolutely can learn the subject. And I would uh, definitely encourage you to learn uh, calculus because it is a fascinating and super powerful uh, mathematics. And indeed, it is used pretty much uh, everywhere in, you know, modern, you know, engineering, technology, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so hopefully I've done somewhat of a decent job to explain calculus at a basic level. And if you feel like I've done an okay job, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.